Give me, give me, give me. You get what you get and you don't throw a fit. As I look down at all you little people. <laughs> I need, I need. Look how great I am. There is a special Jewish holiday called Purim. And it's a time of gift giving parades. Uh, it's a great celebration and party to commemorate the victory that God brought over Haman who wanted to destroy them. Uh, so who was Haman and what can we learn from him today? There is a very funny movie called Rebound, and in the movie, uh, the coach gets in trouble because he keeps throwing tantrums. He keeps he keeps getting angry uh, because uh, he has a bad temper, and when he doesn't get what he wants, uh, he throws a fit. And one particular scene, uh, his team is losing, people are not listening to what he's saying, and he gets angry, and he takes one of the basketballs and kicks it. And when he kicks the ball, he hits the uh, opponent's team, uh, team's mascot, a bird, and kills it. it. It's kind of a funny scene, but uh, I know myself, I've gotten angry before playing sports, and I've even taken the ball and kicked it. And uh, we can all throw tantrums if we're not careful. And uh, today we're going to look at the great tantrum of Haman. Uh, he thought the world evolved around him, but it only brought about, only brought about his own destruction. In Esther chapter 3, verse 1 to 6, uh, the Bible talks about it. It says, Sometime later, King Xerxes promoted Haman, son of Hamadatha, the Agite, over all the other nobles, making him the most powerful official in the empire. All the king's officials would bow down before Haman to show him respect whenever he passed by. For so the king had commanded. But Mordecai refused to bow down or show him respect. Then the palace officials at the king's gate asked Mordecai, Why are you disobeying the king's command? They spoke to him day after day, but still he refused to comply with the order. So they spoke to Haman about this to see if he would tolerate Mordecai's conduct, since Mordecai had told them that he was a Jew. When Haman saw that Mordecai would not bow down or show him respect, he was filled with rage. He had learned of Mordecai's nationality, so he decided it was not enough to lay hands on Mordecai alone. Instead, he looked for a way to destroy all the Jews throughout the entire empire of Xerxes. Several years back, uh, Barbie and I came back for a longer furlough uh, with the kids, and uh, she wanted to take some classes. And in that time, she had a little bit of extra funds that came in from the government, so she asked me if I would take a tennis class with her, and so we did. And uh, we took this tennis class at one of the local community colleges here, and uh, the coach was a good guy, uh, a Christian man. And one of the things that he said that I really, uh, really stuck in my head is, you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. Because the thing is, life comes at us from all different angles, and we're not supposed to throw fits and tantrums when we don't get what we want. Um, now, we're going to look at some negative patterns uh, of tantrums, especially that we see in the life of Haman. And the first thing that we see here is that there is rage. In Job chapter 5, verse 2, he makes this comment. He says, anger kills the fool. And how appropriate is this sentiment from the scriptures? Before we get into the rage that Haman felt, I want you to see how intense it was. Uh, the word filled here means to be overflowing, something that can't be contained. It has to be vocalized and demonstrated. And, and to me, it, it just almost seems that Haman was a volcano. Uh, back in the year 1815, uh, a volcano called Mount Tambora uh, erupted. 
is one of the most devastating volcanoes ever, and it killed over 120,000 people, created huge tsunamis, and even caused the Earth's temperature to drop, resulting in worldwide crop failure. Uh, this is how Haman acted when he heard that Mordecai would not bow down to him. Uh, it didn't matter the reasoning. Mordecai being a Jew was an honorable in, in the fact that only to God would he bow. Uh, pride was not the reason for Mordecai's insubordination. Rather, it was his devotion to God. Uh, the question is, so is it wrong to bow to another person? Uh, it might be that question that might be going through your mind right now. Uh, I know in Zambia and in other cultures uh, around the world, bowing is considered uh, a thing of respect. Uh, in the Septuagint, though, which is the Greek version of the Old Testament, uh, we find some theological evidence to what Mordecai's heart was. Uh, this is not found in our translations today, but shows what the Jews understood about this reverence that was being asked to Mordecai and why he refused. And so from that translation, it says, O oh, you, O oh Lord, that it was not in insolence or pride or for any love of glory that I did this and refused to bow down to this proud Haman, for I would have been willing to kiss the soles of his feet to save Israel. But I did this so that I might not see, set human glory above the glory of God, and I will not bow down to anyone but you, who are my Lord, and I will, do not, and I will not do these things in pride. It was very common for leaders in the past to see themselves as gods. They had great control and power over everyone. So they would think to themselves, I must be a god. And this thought process is abominable. And so for Mordecai to refuse to bow and show homage to a false god like Haman is something to be uh, honored because he would not uh, bow down to him. And he would only bow down to God. And I also think this gives us a better insight into why Haman became so angry and filled with rage. You see, it was all about him. Uh, oh, oh, did he have a big head? No wonder he threw such a great fit. And that also kind of gets me to a thought that, that Haman was not just like a volcano, but he was also like a snake. Now, the idea of rage here is something that is very intense, an intense heat uh, or something venomous. And the reason I thought a snake is a good symbol for Haman wasn't because he was an evil guy, uh, even though he was. He is considered to be on the same level of wickedness as Hitler himself, who killed millions of Jews. As I was thinking of a snake's instant reaction or something uh, it doesn't to something that it doesn't like, uh, it, it strikes. And, and some snakes, like the black mamba, will even chase after you. Uh, and that was Haman. He was full of poison and full of venom. Uh, some people are just waiting to strike. Actually, most of our society is like that. They have been taught uh, just to take uh, what you want. And if you, if you can't get it, uh, be hateful, violent, and ugly, and angry as you want. People like to use the word tolerance, but they only tolerate you if you agree with them. Um, it's kind of like my youngest, Eli. Uh, right now, uh, being back in the States, uh, we have a plethora, we have a, a great number of TV channels that he can watch, and um, he likes watching TV, and that's not that big of a deal uh, to some degree, uh, but if we want to change the station, or his brother or sister want to watch something else, boy, does he have the ability to change from some sweet little boy that everybody loves to a demon child, uh, ranting and raving and throwing a huge tantrum. And a lot of people struggle uh, with this kind of anger. Uh, I have seen it. I, I've experienced it, and I'm the one. I've even done it myself. And uh, when someone disagrees, you can see you know, they'll throw a punch. Or when we don't get our way, we shout insults. And when we can't control the rage, because uh, who control can control a volcano like this? Uh, our homes, our families, our relationships, all these things get destroyed. These negative fits are destructive and it can affect generations. And that brings me to my next thought of a destruction or a destroyer. When Haman, he gets angry, he does the unthinkable. In, in order to get what he thinks is justice for not getting homage from Mordecai, Haman decided that genocide was the best course of action. Now, you may think, yeah, I could get angry uh, when I don't get what I want, but I would never destroy a nation. But you destroy something. 
relationships get destroyed, testimonies get destroyed, marriages get destroyed, when we determine that our way is more important, uh, that our selfish agenda supersedes that of, an of another, destruction will always come. Now, it wasn't just Mordecai that Haman wanted. It wasn't enough to take out his rage on him. Esther chapter 3 verse 6 says this, he had learned of Mordecai's nationality, so he decided it was not enough to lay hands on Mordecai alone. Instead, he looked for a way to destroy all the Jews throughout the entire empire of Xerxes. Now, this destruction has the idea of complete extermination, uh, to cause, to perish, to be wiped off of the face of the earth. And, and this is the kind of result that happens when we throw our own selfish tantrums. Uh, it brings about this kind of destruction. Uh, this is what anger brings. So how can we overcome our desire to make this world all about me? Because uh, if this is our attitude, then when we don't get our way, uh, we will act uh, in a way that hurts ourselves and others. Um, he would get his revenge for that stupid man not seeing things his way. Unfortunately, unfortunately for him, God was at work. Uh, Esther had invited Haman and the king for dinner, and Haman thought to himself, Wow, I am the greatest. In Esther chapter 5, uh, the second part of verse 10 to verse 13, the Bible says this. It says, Then Haman called together his friends and his wife, Zeresh. And he told them how wealthy he was and how many sons he had. He also told them all the ways the king had honored him and how the king had placed him higher than his important men and his royal officers. He also said, I am the only person Queen Esther invited to come with the king to the banquet she gave. And tomorrow also the king, the, the, sorry, the, uh, tomorrow also the queen has asked me to be her guest with the king. But all this does not really make me happy when I see the Jew Mordecai sitting at the king's gate. And so the story of Haman continues, and, uh, and his proud anger uh, is going to cause an implosion. Uh, his friend suggests that he should build a 75-foot pole to hang Mordecai on. This makes Haman happy until he gets to the palace the next morning. The king couldn't sleep the night before, so he decided that it was a good idea to read the book of records. That's something that would put you to sleep. So he finds out that Mordecai had been the one that had saved his life several, uh, several months back. And so he wants to honor him, and the king calls Haman in. In Esther chapter 6, verse 6, uh, the Bible says, So Haman came in, and the king asked him, What should be done for a man whom the king wants very much to honor? And Haman thought to himself, whom would the king want to honor more than me? Haman then learns that Mordecai is the one that the king wants to honor. As Haman suggested, uh, Mordecai was led out in a great parade, uh, escorted by Haman himself. And this really made Haman not very happy. It, uh, what a turn of events. This causes Haman to go nuts. And it kind of reminds me of those Tom and Jerry cartoons where uh, Tom is trying to get Jerry, and he's getting so frustrated because Jerry just keeps outsmarting him. Uh, that that must have been how much how how how, how Haman felt. Uh, he just couldn't get Mordecai, and his chances uh, to destroy him were dwindling. His tantrum and all the all about me attitude that he had was bringing about his ruin. It always does. Yes, sometimes it may seem that those who are selfish and those that are getting what they want and those who think themselves so much greater than everybody else that they're winning, uh, that those who go nuts, uh, those who go nuts on those around them when they don't get their way are successful. Uh, but in the end, it will always lead to destruction. Even Haman's friends knew this. They saw how Mordecai was being honored. Haman could have seen God, should have seen God working and, and said, you know what, this tantrum is not working. He should have stopped. Uh, that his actions were only going to destroy him, but he didn't. And again, that brings me back again to uh, Job chapter 5, verse 2, where it says, anger kills the fool. Uh, remember also uh, that pole that Haman constructed to kill Mordecai? Well, the queen had another banquet, but this time she reveals to the king that uh, and to Haman that she's a Jew. Uh, Esther begs the king to spare her people, just like he spared her. Uh, the king loves Esther very much and asks, who is responsible? Who is responsible uh, for this? And she says, it's, it's Haman. And, and, and Haman, the one that, uh, that he's trying to kill us, he's the destroyer. Uh, and then wicked Haman, he's the one that's trying to kill my people. And of course, Haman is killed, and ironically, on the same pole that was meant for Mordecai. 
So what is the thought on all this? Don't let your tantrums bring about your own destructions. Uh, it was too late for Haman. Uh, you still have time to restore your relationships. You still have time to put others first because this life is not all about you. It's not all about me. It's all about the God who saves, the God that saved the Jews from Haman. If you don't know him today, he wants to save you first because he wants to save you as well because he loves you. He cares about you. Uh, this is his plan. He desires for you to be part of his family. But you got to realize that you can't be this selfish individual. You have to realize that you have to put God above everything else to make him Lord and the king of your life. And maybe today, though, you're just kind of just stuck in, in this destructive pattern uh, of throwing fits and throwing tantrums that when you don't get what you want, uh, you, you blow up in anger and, and, and uh, all this chaos and, and calamity follow after you. But you can change all that with God's help and asking him today uh, to help you out and to deal with your anger so that you don't have to be like Haman, so that you don't have to be all about yourself, that you can make a decision today with God's help uh, to make uh, a change from that pattern of destruction, destructiveness. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, thank you for who you are. Thank you for everything you've done. I pray that today, God, that you would use your word, the story about Haman, to change some lives. Uh, uh, it's interesting when we see very negative people in Scripture and how they blew it and how they uh, destroyed uh, things in their own lives, especially because they decided to do things apart from you. And God, we need you today. Uh, we don't want to be the fools that are destroyed by our anger. We don't want to be people that are impaled upon our own uh, own wickedness and our own uh, selfishness and our own big headedness, God. We need you today to intervene in our lives and to help us to be uh, victorious uh, and help us, Lord, to be uh, humble and to realize that it's not all about us, God, but it's all about you. And we need to be putting others first. And I pray all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. God bless you guys. Hope you guys have a great, great day.